my god, okay. All right, sorry to uh, interrupt. Uh, well, I'm not sorry to interrupt myself. We actually got the song draws for the next group. And uh, we do have 122. Yo, I hope that makes it in. I, but, you know, give it. Leave we it don't want to get play. anyone's hope up. Hope yeah, up yeah. Do we? All right. Uh, but we do have Heart Rabbit Coaster S21 in. Uh -huh. That would be fun to see. That would be very hard. X-Tree S20. Ooh. Vanish S20, which all the gimmicks were, have been retained in Vanish. They better have. Uh, the speed ups at the end were not retained, but the, they Vanish, were. the Vanish gimmick is still there. Okay. Yeah. And then uh, rounding it out, we got a couple of like more more basic songs. So it's like as you're going from uh, 18s to 19s to 20s, there's a huge difference. So we also have uh, the 19 for Travel to Future, the 18 for Overblow 2. Uh, the 19 for uh, Avalanche? Avalanche, yes. All right. So we do have a very interesting selection of songs that we could be seeing. Now, me personally, I want to see the 22. Me too, especially because, you know, we were talking about it earlier, so that's my jam. But, but, you know, but I can say who probably doesn't want to see the 22. Trench Coat, Jay Henney in the Cup, Pack Rob, D Million. Well, so this is going to be uh, pool, uh, the first pool. So that's, that's true. That's four true. for Eden, Chesmix, Jay Henney in the Cup, and Pack Rob. Yes. So they did keep the 22. All right. Well, so we didn't get the 22. We've actually got a set coming up of Travel to Future S19, Vanish S20, and then Avalanche S19. That's still a pretty stamina focused set. So they're definitely, definitely going in there. It is. Travel to Future also going to be fun with the 16th note taps towards the end. Oh yeah, they're going to have to like really jackhammer that with their heel or something. It is true. Travel to Future. It's very crossover heavy. You might accidentally trigger the center. It's very jackhammer heavy, so you gotta make sure you're hitting those centers. So, a lot of center action in that sense. So let me ask you a question. Have you ever tried foot switching the taps on Travel to Future? I have not. I I would have to like bracket foot switch. You know, as we as we watch them play it, I'm gonna think about it. Now, I don't ask that thinking it's a great idea. In fact, I think it's a horrible idea. But it's always curious to see if it's doable. Haru says some taps are not foot switchable, but I want to see which ones are. Definitely for Travel to Future D21. I know some of them are not foot switchable for sure because of it's far away. Yeah, starting off, we're going to be seeing a pretty easy beginning of the song. Slight stamina, but it's not going to be anything too too difficult for either player. Picking up a couple bads and goods, but the overall accuracy is pretty strong on the right side as well, too. 404 Eden still maintaining that good combo. Yeah, 404 eating, I'm noticing, is comboing, but he is getting a lot more straight greats and goods. Yeah. We've seen that really add up in the tournament, and it's caused a couple people to drop out. If we're looking at the old score system versus the new one, Yeah. probably earlier than they would have previously. Yep. Slight drops on the center there. Ooh, and Forever Eden is locking in those uh, crossovers. So let's see how they do with the jackhammers. Man, yeah, 404 Eden is looking really strong. They missed the first jackhammer, but they got the second and third. Yes. Wow, really strong from 404 Eden. Chesmix looking really solid as well. Yeah, you can really see 404 Eden really lock onto that crossover to make sure that uh, he gets the combo. 
not much of a factor in this one, but that's the PA difference that I was talking about. 404 E are, had 66 Actually. grades as opposed to chess mix is 27. So the what really benefited 404, two misses versus 22. Yeah, that definitely helped. Very strong performance by both players. All right, now a little something different with Vanish. I think uh, everyone's pretty familiar with its main gimmick, but we're gonna see a few runs um, focused mainly on side turning for this one. So uh, a lot of turning on one side or another. Yeah. Oh, Ooh, they're ready. Light drops on the right side. I think it's from the centers, looks like. Yeah, 404 Eden, man, he is looking really, really sharp. Yeah. Neither player going to be full comboing through the bracket section, but 404, one miss on the entire thing. Yeah, I think the gimmick is tricky. If you don't see like the visual timing for that vanish, it can throw you off slightly. Oh yeah, As especially if pump isn't your primary game or you just haven't seen the chart before. Why would you expect that to happen? Yeah. Ooh, yeah, they went for that stream. That's good. All right, we're going to get the uh, burst at the end. Man. Solid. Really good score for 404 Eden. Did he just combo that burst? He comboed through the burst. He got all of the turns at the end. Really, really good score out of him. 97 1. That's disgusting, but in the good way. <laughs> Chez, he really pushed through it. May have been unfamiliar with the chart. Yeah. Ended with, honestly, another good low grade count, but a lot of misses. Yeah. So I think that's the thing that's like. Yeah, his accuracy is really good, but now it's just going to be, he will have to fight against chart knowledge for sure. Right. So are you aware if, if uh, Chez is a primary uh, DDR, ITG oh, player? So I had to fight Chez Mix at play, and okay. he destroyed me, but in a respectful manner at DDR. He's a really good DDR and Set Maniacs player. Got it. Also, he owns... I think he owns his own arcade, Red Note, in Las Vegas. So if anyone's in Las Vegas, definitely hit that arcade up. They have Pump It Up Phoenix. So I've heard, I've heard of Red Note. That's his arcade. Yeah. Great. Oh, and now we got Avalanche. Also stamina driven. Are they going to spin? I don't think they will, but you know it'd be nice to see if they did. So we did see uh, the S17 for V3 get played earlier. There were zero spins. I don't oh. know. I don't know how you feel about that, but. You know, it's understandable. It's a tournament. you got to focus on the score. So I don't fault them. But it would be nice to see it. Yeah, he got it. Uh, he also got fourth at Bite for Set Maniacs tournament. So he's definitely a strong accuracy player in that regard. Good yeah. covering by both players. Yes, I think so this is really interesting because on the straightforward parts of the song, you can see Chez is really dominating when it comes to accuracy. Yeah.
Four of our Eden is still comboing very strong as well. Oh, absolutely. They are picking up a few more greats than Chesmix. But, ooh. Okay, they're nailing the turns here. Yep, did not trip up either player. We got the same thing on Mirror. Chess retaining combo. It's actually 404 Eden that drops. Oh, slightly off time, but Ooh, the drill. That's that's gonna be. I think he still has the advantage in accuracy, but we're gonna have to see. Both players handling the side turns very well. Hold, hold, hold. Okay, good. Drops a little bit of that end hold. That could be slightly dangerous, but overall the accuracy was really good. Oh! Wow! Ooh! Chess takes it! 95.9 to 95.1. Look at the great count. This is almost identical. Yeah. That's impressive. Good job to both players. Yeah, that was great. Oh yeah, Red October. That was at uh, Last Note as well. I mean, sorry, it was at Red Note as well. Um, but yeah, he has very strong accuracy on Set Maniacs. It's very, I'm glad he's also participating in this tournament as well. Uh, I don't know if Pump It Up is his main game, but it's always nice to see people sort of like, you know, enter, enter tournaments like in a, sorry, cross tournaments. That's, I don't know the word for that. Y'all know what I mean, yeah. Uh, cross train, that's it, yeah. Exactly. I think I think people should explore multiple games. Whether it's dance games or hand games, it just it kind of gives you more it, it doesn't it, it kind of gives you more perspectives on like what kind of constitutes as a rhythm game. Okay, so we got Pack Rob and Jay Honey in the cup. Both uh, players promoted from the last pool into this one. So they have both been playing for a while. They're going to probably feel the fatigue. And good on them for pushing through it. Ooh. Jay Henney going for a really fast speed bot. He's oh. doing 680. Ooh, that's pretty fast. The audience is hyped. Jay Henney getting the better out of the beginning. Both players get a little bit of a break now. Both players still going strong in life bar. We'll see what happens in this next section. Slight bad, that's okay. Oh. Slight miss, also okay. Ooh. Oh, Jay Henney, not a miss in any of the tap sections. I think you got the stage pass on that. Sick run. 
Good job to both players. Jay Henny and the Cup did lock on to some more patterns on that front. Yeah, 963 oh, wow. versus 95.5. It's pretty close. You can definitely see Pacrob has less grades, but slightly more misses, which probably tipped the scale in favor to uh, Jay Henny. Absolutely. And I hope it's coming through on the player cam, just watching Jay Henny turn. Yeah. I get so happy and so excited to see somebody just really go in at turns like that. Yeah, you can see he really commits. Like he's putting the extra energy just to make sure that he gets that uh, crossover resolved. And it's just very interesting to see because it's like both players have a different play style. Like Pacrob wants to double step just to make sure that he's able to sort of like get the perfects and sort of like chain it without losing uh, balance. Right. But as we've seen before, when he knows he needs to turn, Pack Rob is there with the turning. Exactly. Too. Yeah. And it's great to see. All right, moving into Vanish. Uh, both players, if they're not familiar with this chart, would have seen it, so they are going to know what's coming. Yeah. Slight misstep by both. I think they're trading bads and misses They together. are. They're just going back and forth. We'll see how they visually time this uh, next thing, though. I feel like most players, if they don't play this frequently, tend to go early. Looks like Jay Ooh. Henny is going a little bit early for the brackets. But Pacrob is nailing the timing on this. I would say he's seen this chart a time or two. Ooh. He is using that chart knowledge to his advantage. Slight break. We're going to go into the second vanish section. Now, they will have to cross over on this one, so they both have to commit. And you can definitely see, like, uh, both Pacrob and Jay Henny are committing to the turns. Right, and, and it is a very tricky section unless you're used to doing those types of turns. Exactly. Ooh, ooh. Both players Get through with light bar. Neither combo through the burst section. 95-7 for Pac Rob against the 93 for Jay Henney. It really seemed to me like that first banish section with the brackets really put a hurting on Jay Henney. Yeah, this de the fatigue is definitely hitting for sure. Good on them for persevering, but yeah, definitely the first visual gimmick. It can sort of like throw you off slightly. going to round out the last song for this group with Avalanche S19 again. Who do you feel this favors for? This is interesting because as we saw with Chesmix, Chesmix comes from a background of like really good four panel accuracy or five panel set maniacs accuracy. Pacrob is a very like very seasoned DDR player. So we may have the advantage with the straightforward streams, but we'll have to see. Right, because we are going to see for I'm just th estimating here, but probably the first two thirds of the chart, it's a lot of straightforward turn or straightforward runs. Right. Jay Henny though can get the advantage with those end turns because those end turns are rough. Absolutely. If he commits, yeah. 
You do see a slight combo break, but the accuracy is still there throughout. Jay Henney looking really strong going into this section. Still no spins. You know, that's okay. That's okay. I understand. I, I, I can't understand. say I'm surprised. Yeah, Jay Henney picks up his first, his first miss now, but he's still got a little bit to catch up to the few that we've seen from Pac Rob. Yeah, this is a very close battle. You can definitely see, like, Hackrob is picking up a couple misses, but he's still getting a lot of perfects. Right. He, Jay, he is being generally more accurate. Yeah. Jay Henny is preserving that combo, but there are a few straight greats, so we'll have to see. All right, they're going to have to commit. This next section is a stamina burner for sure. Jay Henny turning, looking really good while doing it. Last turning section. Oh. All right, both players get the triple hold at the end. I feel like this one's going to be very close. Oh, look at that great nine. count on Pac Rob's side, nine. Nine greats. He also had far fewer goods than Jay Henney, but yeah, that accuracy. Yeah, you can definitely see the max combo is a lot higher. I think Jay Henney definitely had more instances where he kept combo, but. Unfortunately, that doesn't mean too much anymore. It yeah. only means 0.5% of the total score. It's still a very di impressive display of uh, consistency though. So. It is, and, and like we were talking before, I don't think 19s are the places where you're gonna start seeing 5,000 points mean a lot. Yeah. It absolutely means something, but it, it's not going to be a huge difference. Yeah.